Welcome to the SQL on Rails screencast. This is our first production. We're excited for everyone to uh, join us on this project. So SQL on Rails is a new web application framework developed entirely in SQL with a pure SQL development environment that makes developing web applications incredibly easy. And uh, we're going to kind of demonstrate the ease of use of this new framework today. So uh, rather than doing the traditional blog uh, demo, we're going to start out with a full internet search engine. So uh, here we are in the products directory. We're just going to do a quick ls, see what the files are. And uh, SQL on Rails comes with a powerful tool called SOAR, a SQL on Rails environment initializer. And we're just going to call our project a bajillion because that's about how many results you'll get. So this init script is going to do quite a few things for us as far as checking dependencies, making sure we're all good to go there, setting up the environment and creating our initial project directory and the one file that really will contain all of the application code for this project. We'll just go in there, take a peek, see the uh, one bajillion dot SQL. It's just a small file with a bunch of, you know, headers and templates and stuff. It's only about 74,000 lines. It's just the bare bones minimum code boilerplate just to kind of get an application running in SQL on Rails. This is really all you need. You just run mysql-f and then the file name and it pops up the server. There it is. Now with the server running we can go ahead and check and see what we got. So just go to localhost and there it is. It's the uh, default SQL on Rails template. The uh, default template is very helpful and instructs where we can go to uh, customize what we're seeing here. So uh, that's the first thing we're going to want to do. We're just going to stop the server here. Now customizing uh, your application is usually accomplished via editing the, uh, the SQL file. But uh, we've, we've pre-prepared some, uh, some small sed scripts that will do the customization for us. So there's the uh, sed script. We're just going to pipe that into MySQL. It's really just doing some uh, minor text transformations on the source file. I mean, you can figure out the details later. It's all in the documentation. We don't want to you know, take time in the screencast. But you see it's already updated the application. We'll just start the server again and refresh. You can see, just did some minor changes here. As you can see, it's now customized for our application, which is Brazilian, the search engine. So uh, the text kind of reflects our own, you know, personal needs for this application. After just a few small changes to the source file. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, stop this server. A search engine really isn't useful without without a query input box on it. There's not much you can do about it. So we'll just uh, pop this open here. And good old TextMate. Now you're going to see just how little code you have to write with SQL on Rails in order to add something like an, uh, a form or handling input from the user in a web application developed in SQL on Rails. So all we do is just use a, a little snippet here. And... Uh, add the element. It's a text box and the name is going to be a query. Let me just uh, save this. After saving uh, the source file and uh, restarting the SQL on Rails development server, uh, we can then go refresh our page and, s and see our changes in action. Just like that. Might as well give that one a try, huh? So we'll just uh, search for cool people. Always looking for some cool people. Ah, oh, whoops. Not found. Of course, that's to be expected. We haven't, uh, we haven't actually created that page yet. So start, stop the server. It does a little clean up there. Okay. Just jump down somewhat down the file. Go to the standard uh, new pages area of the file, which is always at line 54321. And we've got to specify it here, you know. SQL on Rails is powerful, but it can't read your mind. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> so here we just say that we're adding the query page. And, you know, got to let it know the type. And here's another little uh, text make snippet. So here we're just going to create a new page. It's, uh, it's 
it's really amazing how little code it takes to add pages to this to your application. Just do sort page tab, and it you know inserts the standard boilerplate. Fill that in. Let it know it's the query page. It's really amazing that just to create an entirely new page, you only need maybe a few pages of source code. So here's where the complex business logic goes of your application. For this search engine, we're just going to do a select star from the internet and use a good old SQL where content like and, you know, use our criteria. Okay, so there we go. We're content like criteria. I'm going to save this one. It's a fairly basic search algorithm, but it'll get the job done. This is actually what Google used when they first came on the market. All right, so we'll go back and uh, submit the query again. You can see the query went through and it seemed to work fine, but uh, no results were found for, for cool people. That's probably because we haven't loaded the internet yet into our database. Now, luckily, uh, earlier today, expecting this screencast, I uh, did a MySQL dump of the internet down to my desktop. So uh, that was good thinking. Yeah, so there's the uh, SOR import command, and we're just going to feed it the file, and uh, desktop there, the underscore internet dot SQL, hit enter, and it's importing. It's so, well, the internet's getting larger these days, huh? Yeah, it is. All right. That uh, import's complete, and we'll just fire up the server again and uh, switch back over to our web browser and refresh and uh, see what we get. So this time, with the internet loaded into the database, you can see we returned all sorts of results for cool people. It's plenty of stuff. You got, uh, you know, your, your big names. You got Mr. T there. If you go back to the top, you can't, really, you can't really argue with the fact that Guido should be at the top of this list. Yep. You got Jack Bauer, some other people. Commander Taco? Whoa, Taco. Well, I mean, this is just an alpha version. I think we're going to need some tweaking, obviously. It can't be perfect, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, Chuck Norris should be on top. Absolutely, but there's a few... Barring a few glitches, the application is already running, and I hope you noticed that you get image search for free. I mean, that's just one of the built-in features of SQL on Rails. We didn't even have to do anything. This is a small part of the full SQL on Rails framework. I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration of uh, the amazing power that SQL on Rails provides you as a web developer. And uh, we hope to see you more in the SQL on Rails community in, in the future.